after locking up the fourth and final seed in the Centennial Conference Tournament with a victory every sophomore on the final day of the CC regular season, the Franklin and Marshall baseball team traveled to Baltimore last weekend for the double elimination playoffs hosted by Johns Hopkins. The Diplomats entered the tournament as the fourth seed and took on sixth-ranked Hopkins in Friday's opening round, stunning the Blue Jays with a 3-0 victory behind a complete game shutout from starter Brendan DeMond. DeMond went the distance for the third time this year, allowing just four hits and six base runners. The senior retired the side in order in six innings, including each of the final four frames, and put away 13 straight batters to close out the contest. FM jumped out in front 1-0 in the top of the first on an RBI single from Kevin Shields. Will Benenson kept the inning alive with a two-out double ripped to the gap in right center before Shields blooped a single to shallow left field that allowed Benenson to race home from second. Matt Mazansky's solo home run in the top of the fourth, the first round tripper of his career, pushed the lead to 2-0, while Rob Anderson's two-out RBI single in the ninth gave DeMond all the support he would need as the Diplomats walked away with a 3-0 victory. Gettysburg defeated Haverford 5-3 in Friday's other first round matchup, setting up a winner's bracket showdown between the Diplomats and the Bullets with a spot in the CC title game at stake. Despite trailing for most of the game, the Diplomats' never-say-die attitude prevailed as they overcame a two-run deficit in the top of the ninth and eventually outlasted the Bullets 5-4 in a dramatic 11-inning contest. FNM starter Sean Cosgriff and Gettysburg starter Drew Felsenthal were each worked deep into the contest, with Cosgriff lasting eight innings and Felsenthal eight and one-third. Cosgriff surrendered three runs on ten hits while striking out five. Trailing 3-1 heading into the top of the ninth, FNM put together a rally with its back against the wall. Anderson and Aaron Gillette notched back-to-back singles to lead off the frame, before Avery Attenson laid down a sacrifice bunt down the third base line that nearly turned into an infield single, but nonetheless effectively moved Anderson and Gillette into scoring position. Brian Erb then came through with an RBI single to right field that scored Anderson to pull FNM within 3-2, and Alex Vissera followed with a clutch 2-RBI single that took a high hop over Gettysburg third baseman Nate Simon and bounced into left field, giving FNM a 4-3 edge entering the bottom of the ninth. Gettysburg answered with Tommy Lenore's RBI single to send the game into extra innings, but Vissera again registered a key hit in the 11th as he ripped a one-out single through the left side to put the go-ahead run on the base pass for FNM. Matt Mazansky secured a hard-fought walk, and Brett Paneros earned a free pass on a hit-by-pitch to load the bases. With Anderson at the plate, the first pitch from bullet reliever Luke Lawrence bounced in the dirt, allowing Vissera to race home for the game-winning score. Vissera then closed out the win on the mound in the bottom of the 11th, polishing off his two and one-third innings of work by forcing a fly out to center to earn his first career victory, sending the Diplomats to the championship round. Hopkins ousted Gettysburg in a wild 9-8 losers bracket contest on Saturday afternoon to set up a rematch of Friday's opening round showdown. FNM entered Sunday's championship in the driver's seat as the Blue Jays needed to defeat the Diplomats twice to claim the CC trophy. The Diplomats dropped the first game 8-1, creating a make-or-break Game 7. With all of the momentum seemingly on Hopkins' side entering the do-or-die contest, FNM quickly put that momentum to rest with a remarkable 11-run top of the second. The Diplomats belted four home runs in the frame, matching their entire season total, to break the game wide open. Attenson started the scoring barrage with a solo home run to right, the first of his two solo bombs in the frame, which were also the first two homers of his career. Gillette poked an opposite field RBI single into left to make it 2 to nothing. before Vissera delivered a bases clearing 3 RBI double to deep left center to stretch the lead to 5-0. to zero. After a Mazansky walk, Shields blasted a three-run bomb over the hedges in left to keep things rolling for the Diplomats. Attenson's second solo homer ensued, before Joe Galito joined the home run party with a two-run shot to left to cap off the wild frame for FNM. With DeMond back on the bump and the Diplomats sporting an 11-run advantage, the fourth centennial title in school history was now in the Diplomats' sights. Pitching on just one day of rest, DeMond returned to start the decisive game with an NCAA bid on the line and proved effective once again, going five full innings, fanning six batters, and allowing just one run on six hits. He became the first player in CC history to record a pair of victories in the postseason tournament, earning him tournament MVP honors. The Diplomats added on two more scores in the third on RBI hits from Mazansky and Shields to stretch the lead to 13-0, before Mazansky closed out the FNM scoring with a three-run shot in the fifth to put the icing on the cake for the Diplomats. 
It was a total team effort for the Diplomats, as every starter in the lineup registered at least one hit and scored at least once in the landslide win. Alex Guerra pitched the final four frames in relief, striking out four and allowing just three hits. Guerra fanned the game's final batter, sending the Diplomats into a raucous championship celebration. FNM will find out its NCAA regional destination on Sunday. The regional tournament will take place from May 15th through the 19th.